Hello and welcome to Teapot with me, Michelle Hammond. I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by the lovely Emma Holly, the Education Director and Founder of Restore Scar Therapy and Teapot Shine Your Light Award winner for the Inspirational Trainer category. Emma, lovely to have you with us and a huge congratulations. Oh, thank you so much. It's just been um, such a thrill to to be recognised and I really appreciate um, the nominations that came in for me. And yeah, it was really lovely to, to get that surprise that I wasn't expecting. So a delight. Thanks for, for inviting me along for this chat as well. That's an absolute pleasure. So for those listening in who don't know much about Restore Scar Therapy or your background, start us off, Emma, with just kind of telling us about your backstory before you kind of launched into the world of scar therapy. <laughs> yeah, so um, last year was my 30th year um, since I qualified in massage. Um, and I really um, was very passionate always about sort of finding clients who needed a bit of help with pain. I'd always find that that, that was something in my massage career that really attracted me. Um, but then I'd got to a point where um, I'd been doing it for some time and I felt a little bit trapped in the sense that I wanted to help clients, but they were perhaps doing things in between appointments, which meant that we were kind of just kind of staying static. So maybe they had kids and their backs were getting sore again because they were running around after the kids, which we, I think, can all relate to, or they sat at desk, again, can relate to that, and, and their shoulders were getting tired. And I kind of felt, oh, I'm just kind of like part of this picture, but and I help them, but then, you know, we all give advice as therapists as to what lifestyle changes might be helpful. And so I'd kind of thought, oh, do you know what? I just want to do something a bit different, but I really wasn't sure what. I didn't have a preconception that I wanted to go and work with um, scars and injury recovery. Um, but there was a, a sort of year and a half period where I just was looking out for courses that sounded a bit different. Mm. Um, and one of the things that came up was, um, was seeing a course about treating scar tissue. And I went into it totally blindly. It was partly um, a, a sort of... The stars aligned in the sense we'd recently moved down south from Edinburgh and it fell in a holiday and I thought well I could do the course and my daughter could catch up with some school friends so it really wasn't that I thought well that's the course for me um, because there was so little information about what that actually involved and and what I could expect to do afterwards and how you know that fitted in with a massage practice I think by the time I finished the course um, at that stage, there was only 15 people who'd, who'd completed training um, in the UK. So it was really new and, and I came home and I, I was so enlivened by the idea of a different way of helping with soft tissue treatment that I, I was already on the way on the drive back down from Edinburgh. I was pinging out to my local uh, town's Facebook group saying, right, I'm offering treatments. I want people to come and try this because I felt like I needed to get a much bigger body of um, confidence in working with different types of scars. So I think I came away and I called them case studies, but they were just for myself. I did, I did a load of case studies. I think there was 50 people or just shy of, and some of them I just treated once and others I treated up to four times to really see, okay, well, if that comes through the door, what can we expect? Um, and I was completely hooked and everyone was blown away um, that came in for treatment. And one of the one of the really early people that I worked with when I was just ex sort of, I would say, still experimenting, still trying out these new techniques, um, was a lady who was just about to hit 40. And at 19, she'd um, spent her gap year in France working on the vineyards. Mm. And um, she'd been uh, going to the end of um, end of season party with a load of other youngsters in a VW van sat in the back, which doesn't have seat belts. Mm -hmm. And um, unbeknownst to her, the driver was not sober, took a corner too fast. And she had a horrible accident where she, um, you know, that the van tumbled and she hit her head on the um, on a plug on the floor of the van and ended up going into coma, was in long-term care in, in, in France and made a full recovery, um, but had obviously some scarring over her face where she'd had these injuries. And, you know, now 20 years later, I didn't look at her and think, oh, there's a big scar because it had healed really nicely, but she couldn't raise her eyebrows. Um, and she, she jokingly sort of said, oh, it's, you know, natural Botox. And, um, 
and we gave her some treatment and and she could yeah I think within a couple of treatments she got movement back after 20 years of her forehead and could raise her eyebrows and and the most I think what I wasn't expecting is her mum wrote to me and her mum wrote to me and said you know my young girl went out to France and had this horrendous accident and I um you know I felt so you know f- removed from her and I should have been there with her and and she said N- now I look she said before I used to look at her and see her scars and now I look at her and just see her my beautiful daughter again because she felt they'd really changed the way they look and I kind of that was like a kind of wow moment for me because I realized when somebody goes through something traumatic, whether that's an, an injury like that or a cancer diagnosis, mm. it's not just the individual that you're able to help. Um, you know, by treating them, you can have this ricochet effect through through their loved ones. Um, another lady, um, it, it was the, I did manage to get some press about um, about scar tissue work once, and and the headline that it ran with, I, I can hug my kids again. Um, you know, a client who'd had breast cancer and her breasts were so sore when her kids came in to hug her, it hurt her. And and I've had quite a few breast cancer clients have similar experiences. Well, wow, what an amazing thing to be able to it, put someone in a better position that they can hug their family members again. Um, so I feel. That, that you know that it's quite obvious why I love what I do because I think those things shift and they shouldn't really because the scar was something that was created by the body after the injury or surgery unlike sort of muscle tightness which we get with the patients sat at their desks and um you know running around after their kids yeah. you shouldn't get that same production of it so that should be a lasting change um, that you leave your, with your clients. Um, and while some of them, you know, there's other things we need to think about, maybe radiotherapy or inflammatory conditions might mean that scars tighten up a bit, but they shouldn't really go back to where they were. Um, and there are so many people walking around with discomfort or tightness linked to scars that have got no idea that this is a thing, even now. I mean, you know, we've still got a long way to go, but but the momentum's happening. Yeah, which is incredible. And I love that. And I think, you know, lots of people resonate, you know, with that who are who are hands on practitioners, that ability to, you know, not just kind of do a great job, but kind of make a real difference. And to see that, as you say, not just in someone going that felt amazing, but look what I can do now because of that, you know, whether it's to lift my eyebrows, hug my kids. I mean, it's just really powerful. But what a great motivation to get up every morning. And to go to work, what a great way to spend a living and yes. supporting people kind of going going through that. I think it's it's really important. I know something that deeply resonates with, with me and Teapot. So, I mean, obviously you'd started doing this, this incredible kind of hands-on sort of work with, with people with scars and getting real-time feedback and seeing what an absolute profound difference it could make. When did restore scar therapy training sort of come into to the mix? How did that sort of evolve for you? I got asked, um, I was originally um, teaching the work of uh, Sharon Wheeler, who's an amazing um, rolfer, uh, does uh, rolfing therapy, uh, commonly in, we call it structural integration a lot in the UK now. Uh, And she's just uh, an absolute inspiration in terms of magic hands is, is, uh, you know, her hands dance over the body. And um, she, I was very honoured to be asked to be a teacher by her of her modality and I did that um so that launched the training business and for me there was a lot of I, at the time when I'd uh, in a couple of years before that I'd been volunteering with a cancer charity offering treatments and then when I got asked to be a trainer I thought well I need to cut back on on certain things but why don't I you know that whole thing of kind of give a man a fish and he eats for a day and you know give a man a fishing rod or teach him how to fish and he can fish for the year and I thought well if I'm going to be a teacher I'd like to make sure that the the the, the cancer centers are actually doing a bit more so I did some donations of of trainings for them as part of kind of launching my experience and 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 getting getting the word out there within um those kind of fields um which was really exciting and has always been a, an avenue that I'm particularly interested in helping because scarring relating to cancer um is 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 very big and was something that I think was predominantly being ignored as opposed to burns, which a lot of people think about. If you look at any kind of conference um, 
or, or big organizations they're very often burn focused and burns are really significant scars but the number of people i'm very glad to say who are getting burn injuries in the uk is so minimum compared to the, the statistics on cancer um and yet there was no um there was no sort of um access to those individuals for treatment which has shifted significantly um following the efforts I've put in over the last few years. So yeah, so I launched that teaching uh, business and, and taught her courses right up until um, lockdown, basically. And at that point, um, her modality was very much about the a, a therapist delivering treatment. And then we were all stuck in a position where actually we needed people to treat themselves and we needed to think about other things that they could do. Um, and at that point, I kind of... I think I did one or two classes after lockdown and I and I said to Sharon, I just feel that I'm spending a lot of time going, well, Sharon does this, but now I'm doing this. And Sharon says this, but this is what I say. So I, I thought it was the best thing to um, to actually really sort of give myself freedom to, to do and share what it is I was doing, because that now yeah. quite a lot. Um, and so that's been really fun. Um Kind of bringing different things into it so now i i do things like silicon cupping um on the course which um using the the, the most simple and um you know sort of l less than 10 pounds for these little silicon cups because it's what i was saying to people well you could get these little cups and you could use these at home because they're gentle they won't hurt you you can give yourself treatment and it can really make a difference um and looking at you know sports taping for scars and all the other kind of big picture of things that people can do but also getting a bit more focused on if people did the right things in early healing which they're not doing because they're not getting the instructions of what to do they wouldn't end up with the issues that they're getting um so there's a big focus on what should we be recommending what can people do at home um and and I'm I'm now trying to get that word out there and I'm super excited although somewhat terrified to be invited to speak at a um it's always a very long winded, but a, 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 a conference for surgeons who work within breast reconstruction after cancer um, mm. down in Bournemouth um, this year in May. And it will be my first surgical conference where I'm speaking directly to people who are operating about scar tissue and the benefits of scar massage and making sure that the scars well looked after in those early days. So, um, Things are Which is incredible, isn't it? Because we know, I mean, the preparation, you know, I always say we do, we do a lot of massage for people with, with cancer, just generally rather than scar, scar focus. But generally that also the importance of having regular massage pre-surgery to kind of strengthen and, and make the skin sort of supple. So actually getting an opportunity to integrate into that medical profession, to be able to kind of go, actually part of your pre-care should be getting them recommending, recommended to have regular treatment and massage and stuff pre the surgery as we would with exercise now and you know even in rehabilitation directly after surgery we're getting people moving much faster aren't we and because we understand the benefits of that so it's it's fantastic to kind of see that this more integrative approach is growing generally isn't it across across the health spectrum yeah I mean with for me, it's really important that they get started immediately afterwards. If there's an active tumour, depending on what type of tumour it is, certainly over the area where they're going to have surgery, it may well not be appropriate, obviously, then to work over it. But it's the minute the scabs have gone, um, when you've then got a scar, basically, like there's some really simple things like they ought to be putting cream on. And if they've got a high risk of keloids, they ought to go down the silicon route um, mm. and, and some more beneficial kinds of scar, scar massage so um you know if you ask people were you recommended scar massage a good proportion of people are saying yes i was told to massage my scar not told how hard not told for how long um and not told what techniques and i mean it doesn't have to be overly complex but we need to think about is that information getting out there and it ought to be clear and it ought to be consistent um because actually if people start if people are numb after a surgery they'll tend to go too hard yes and actually inflammation leads to more scar tissue yeah. and if they're there rubbing their scar really hard because they can't feel it very well then they're actually going to end up with a more complex scar or potentially produce more scar tissue and I think that message isn't being put out there the message about um products isn't put, put out there um but but uh, so, you know that since pre-lockdown to now the number of um nhs best based um 
both lymphedema therapists, oncology physios, um, uh, OTs working with various kinds of recovery um, and standard physios that are coming onto the training and, and bringing this into our healthcare service, as well as um, many more people in private practice. I think, you know, the, the ball's rolling and that's really it's, not, it's, a, it's a pebble in the ocean, isn't it? So it yeah. just starts, as you said earlier, it starts to ricochet out and those people start to kind of, and then other people practicing start to see them sort of doing it and go, well, actually, how how are you doing that? Where did you learn? What can I do? Actually, maybe I should be doing this too. And patients start to ask for it. Don't yes. They? They yeah, do. a few people have said, I'm here because I'm here on the training because my patient sent me and I'm like, oh, fantastic. <laughs> well, they know what they want. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's very true. It's very true. Yeah, absolutely. And so it's gone from strength to strength. I know you have your own private practice sort of in, in London sort of too, and you are you have a, a team of trainers now helping you get this message out there. And as you said, it's not just UK now, it's it's kind of gone global. So tell us about that kind of journey as that's quite an exciting. Yes, no, it's very yeah. exciting. I've, um, so uh, last year I launched with a UK teaching team. So we've got um, two teachers who are teaching the scar therapy practitioner, which is a course for, any kind of scar but but so you learn all the basic techniques and if faced with anything you should kind of feel confident to kind of come in with um manual therapies silicon cupping and and have a look at uh treatments for interoral scarring as well so hair lip surgeries or traumatic face injuries all that kind of thing and then i've got two specialists who um, are working within the field of cancer for many years and they are teaching the oncology scar specialist course and launching in March is a pelvic health physio who's going to be teaching uh, the c-section scar specialist course and then I'm going out to Australia next month um, and we're going to have a teacher in Australia and a teacher in New Zealand so um, I'm going to be hosted by the Australian Physiotherapy Association and do a tour around the country there and uh, in the meantime, train up some teachers that have already done training with me by either coming over to the UK or I went over to New Zealand last year. Yeah. So so it's yeah, it's 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 expanding. And I think it's really important. I'm under discussions with some people in South Africa. They're, they're just saying there's there's nothing like this out here. We need to get the training out here um, and uh, potentially over in Canada and things as well. So I think it's really important that people can access this because I get regular emails from people in other countries saying I'm trying to find a therapist is there anybody here and you know it's it's literally you know hours flight away let alone drive mm -hmm. um, and so I think it's really important that we um, we make sure there is accessibility to this and I'll be looking to do some more sort of different online trainings to make sure that this gets out there as well. Amazing. And it is blended learning already, isn't it? As a massive advocate for 20 odd years of blended learning techniques. And people always told me when I started at the beginning, sort of, you know, back in the early 2000s, you can't teach complementary therapy online. I'm like, listen, the blend of it is perfect. And it sets yeah. itself up beautifully to enable you to hit the ground running so that the practical aspects can be enhanced massively. And you can really just practice 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 um and so it's beautiful to see that's becoming more more of a standard approach but i know you're a, a big advocate for a blended approach too aren't you yeah i'm i'm actually dyslexic and i'm pretty sure i'm on some kind of <laughs> hyperactivity spectrum as a so, psychotherapist i believe we all are on the spectrum <laughs> uh, so i think for me i when i wrote the course i really thought about what i find hard and i find it hard to digest theory material that goes on for longer than about 10 minutes um, so I need little chunks and I need to be able to look at it again. Um, so I was like, OK, well, I need to keep my video short. Um, I need to kind of punch a, a solid message that is what they need to come away with the learning of um, and then reinforce that with some written materials so that if they're, you know, the kind of learner that actually hears it and that's how they acknowledge it. Or maybe they're the ones that read it and then they have to test themselves. So then there's little kind of quizzes. Um, and I think that 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 would have helped me retain the information better when I when I first um, went into it because there's a lot to pick up I mean even as an experienced manual therapist it, there's lots of different concepts and you're often having to think about not only what the person went through in a surgery or an injury like what tissues might have been moved or there could have been even vessels um, moved if there was a big injury and you're thinking well okay well normally that muscle's there and doing that function but if that's taken away because there was such a big injury that that muscle has been moved what's going on in the body and how what other bits are going to get tight and making sure that you've got all of those skills to kind of like 
be able to sort of jump in quite quickly with a with a first patient intake and kind of pick up all of the different things that they're telling you because it's often quite a complex um medical history which is a lot more complex than what I used to have when I had people just turning up for their regular massage yeah. and, and the irony is is a lot of those people I think probably did pull a lot of my clients looking back who had ongoing niggles because the niggle isn't always where the scar is the niggle is normally the compensatory area so um I I now think gosh if I had those skills those clients that perhaps I was frustrated that were just stuck in a kind of get them out of pain for a little bit and then they're back in pain those are probably the ones that if I'd gone a bit deeper maybe they had a c-section you know which is a really big surgery most people don't even mention it when you take their yeah. medical history um or maybe they'd had an, an accident much earlier in life if you think about like something like um an appendicitis which has potentially really got quite extreme before a child you know it's quite often in in children we see um appendix removal so you've got a scar with a lot of inflammation. There was there was an infection in the body. That's the kind of thing where often you get um, quite a big buildup of scar tissue. And then the person grows. So you've got a scar which hasn't got the capacity to stretch like our normal skin. And so people will potentially have this big pulled in scar on their right above their right hip. Well, that's definitely going to affect the hip. It's going to affect the lower back. It might come across and affect through uh, the sort of fascial chains um, opening up across the body. So now I'm thinking, oh, I wish I could go back and unpick some of those clients and find out because if I wasn't doing an abdominal massage, I possibly would have never seen. And it's very unlikely you'd see a C-section scar because as a massage therapist, even if you're doing abdominal massage, you don't undrape that low. So um lots lots uh lots to kind of consider there yeah, <laughs> and, just, and, and just shows how integral it is to we're well, definitely msk work as well isn't it you know it's it's it's, yeah, it, completely. it's a whole body analysis and looking at you know sort of i'm in my final year of my traditional chinese medical doctorate and, and you know just that kind of step back and look at everything more holistically is such an important approach anyway but as you say even as a a massage therapist just being able to kind of go okay I might I might only be treating the back but actually understanding what's happened to the whole body because it's connected and potentially what's happened emotionally sort of as well because it all it all sort of plays a... and your clients will come in and they want you to go to the pain and I mean I do always in integrate my massage and if somebody comes in you know and, and they're presenting pain is backache even if um, you know, that the issue is clearly coming from somewhere else. I think it's important to touch on that and for them to feel physically heard in that way. And also that probably has started to go really tight and potentially could be, you know, little muscle spasms and things like that. And so therefore we can't ignore that. We can't just treat the scar. It's, it's um, you know, my approach is very, I, th I think a lot of people finish the course going, oh, it's so much wider than I thought. Because yeah. even when you, um, when I do my uh, oncology course, and if somebody's um, working with a client who's had, let's say, mastectomy without reconstruction, I might come along and they're literally using the scar techniques kind of up and down along the linear line of the scar. But I often sort of say to them, well, have a look at the other breast if they've still got another intact breast and look how big that is. All of that's been removed and there's scar tissue under all of that area. And then they might have gone poking around looking for lymph nodes, um, mm -hmm. you know, and that might have gone up into the axilla. So we've got to think much bigger the, the internal scar tissue is much more significant than the mark on the skin and surgical teams are getting more and more clever at keeping the mark on the skin small which is yeah. fantastic because the skin's really got limited capacity to uh, kind of stay stretchy after it's got a scar whereas internally our fascia is much more capable of remodeling quicker and mm. responding really well to manual treatment um, and those are the bits that we need to treat the internal scar tissue as well as the external scar yeah. absolutely incredible what I love Emma and it just it fills me with absolute joy is the passion because it's just palpable um, <laughs> and it's wonderful to see because our industry as a whole with complementary therapy you know it's got massively better you know like you 30 years in um, and it's beautiful to see it integrated into health and, and sort of medical now so much more as a standard um, and and I only see that sort of improving but it's took a long while and to be able to kind of recognize these skills and to recognize this practice as 
as incredibly important as it is for someone's overall health and well-being, both physically and emotionally, is incredible. And I think, you know, you're you're at the kind of pinnacle of that because you are dealing with trauma in its physical sense and obviously everything in the iceberg that comes with that. Yeah. Um, to be able to teach therapists how to work and support people in that way and to make that difference so those clients can go out and hug their children and can kind of smile pro- I mean it's just incredible isn't it it's an absolute gift and well done you because it takes a lot of work and energy and a lot of yourself to teach inspirationally anyway you know you have to give so much of yourself but to have curated the content have pulled all this expertise together and to have put it into a really digestible format and um, that can be globally absorbed um is is phenomenal and absolutely a credit to you um, and all of those people that have supported you along the way and an absolute credit um to, to why you've won the inspirational trainer award um at the teapot shine your light awards sort of for 2023 because uh, i couldn't think of an, a, a more worthy winner well done thank you thank you that's that's it means a lot and it's like you say um i if i if i go back the very first conference i ever spoke at um was the sports massage association conference um and i remember my 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 hand shaking as i held the microphone i was so terrified um and you know lots of other really really high level speakers at that conference and i felt like you know why am i here the whole imposter thing and i remember going up to a lady afterwards um who 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 was uh I should remember her name and I don't, but she was just somebody who'd, who'd like uh, helped to get sports massage recognized by physios and helped get them along. And I sort of said, I've been sending out these emails for like, you know, it feels like years. It would probably been about 18 months by that stage to try and get people who could benefit from this. To, to I was saying, I can come in and teach you for free. You're like, yeah. <laughs> this is so important. It just needs to be out there. And I got rejection after rejection after rejection or just, you know, not interested, not interested, not interested. And so if anybody's watching this and it might be a totally different thing, that's your that's your passion. Please don't give up because what that's what she said to me. She said, just don't give up. If you believe in it, just keep going for it. And she said, you know, you've done well today to, to, to you know, speak the, the talk had gone down well. And it really that was the first opening for me to get into um you know to, to to be started taking seriously as a teacher and and to just before I launched my first course um and and don't be frightened to ask for help is the other thing that I'd sort of say and and I and I do that a bit more now kind of go to people who are already in the industry because it's it sometimes you just need somebody to bounce off to say is this normal um yeah. And and that's what I sort of say to my students. I sort of say, don't look at me here thinking, oh, she's just landed there. Like there's been challenges and there's been battles and I never want, and I still feel I'm learning massively. And I think um, we often look at people who are potentially, you know, at, at a high point in their career and doing really well and assume they kind of feel like they've got it all. Mm-hmm. Um, and, I, and I still have complex clients come into my clinic and I go, wow, okay. Yeah. <laughs> And, and and that's important, I think, to share, because I think when you're perhaps, um, you know, earlier on in your career or, or, or suddenly working in a new area, you assume or I assumed, maybe not everyone assumes, I used to assume those people who are experienced don't have that feeling. But that feeling is good. Yeah, because that feeling mm-hmm. makes you think, what am I going to do and why am I going to do it? And then next time they come back, the client, the challenging client, you think, did I do the right thing or could I do something different? And, and, and that questioning is so integral to being a great therapist. So <laughs> if you have those panic moments, please know that you're not alone in those. And I still get those. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think that's that's really important and powerful to share. And I think, yeah, absolutely. I, I still I run a Friday clinic myself and, you know, it, it humbles you massively, doesn't it? When you kind of because also I think when you teach, it's important to retain practice yeah. because you have to keep applying your knowledge and you have to keep. Right. And as you say, that curiosity is absolutely that passion for lifelong learning, for always staying open. And actually, I always say the more you know, the more you realize you don't. Yeah. Uh, 
and that, that's a forever kind of learning but that's what's exciting about this industry isn't it that's what's yeah. so wonderful about the industry we're in is actually there's there's, there's not an end because <laughs> we're always learning whether it's about the body or the client themselves or our capabilities and skill set so it's uh, an eternal sort of growth there for, for us all to sort of do but you know you're an epitome of kind of what it what it means to kind of be a lifelong learner and to to have applied that sort of absolute passion and to to be sparking that in other people because I think that was the recognition for the teapot shine your light awards is not just a great teacher um although that's phenomenal and that's that's really sort of important but it's someone who can ignite a real passion in someone else and makes them want to go out and shout it from the rooftops and, and be that difference. Um, and I think that sort of education and empowerment um, is not so so prevalent in our in our industry. There's lots of courses and there's lots of content, but actually there's very few people that are able to really inspire people to go and make a difference. And the fact that you've got people reaching out to you going, we need that in this country, we need that here, just shows the amount of passion and, and inspiration that has come into it. But the amount of evidence you've you you put into what you do and why you do it so again a huge huge congratulations Emma and thank you for kind of coming to join me this morning and sort of share a little bit more of that story to, to others who may be not familiar with the restore scar therapy and I know obviously the future is is kind of growth for you and you've got obviously these opportunities to expand this into other countries and to to expand the the focus points of restore scar therapy into to different categories like with the oncology um, and the MSK and C-section based stuff. Um, but for people that want to kind of do this training with you, what's the best way? Obviously, jumping onto the website is going to be probably the first yeah so I've I see to be a woman of, of, of increasing number of websites um so restoretherapy.co.uk is where the training's at um uh, and that's all about what are the courses what are the dates uh, you know which course is right for you um launching in the coming weeks is restore scar therapy which is going to be a directory site so if somebody wants to try scar therapy but it's it's literally it's only just we're in uh we're in january now so if you're watching this any later hopefully it should be up and running but that's just going this week and then i've got a clinic site which is restore Th restore therapy clinic um but the the training is at restoretherapy.co.uk and yeah and um I think that if somebody's not sure where they want to work, then definitely I would recommend to do the practitioner course. Mm -hmm. It's really broad and it just, um, I, I purposely made it that you didn't have to do courses in a specific order um, because I get people who are, uh, you know, well, lots of us are worried about money these days and you don't necessarily, if you know you want to work with cancer, you don't necessarily want to do another course first, which is less relevant to you and is going to be talking about how to work with knees or faces and, uh, you know, you're thinking, well, that isn't what I'm going to do. Um, so you can jump onto any course, but the practitioner is the most broad and means that you can you can treat any scar. Um, but then if you are really specific with oncology, you can do the oncology scar specialist. The, the massage techniques for the scars run through them all, but then each course has got different add-ons. So if you did one and then came back and did another, you should find that you get a bit of a refresher and then advancement of your skills. Um, and again, we've got the C-section scar specialist. If you know that your postnatal care is, is your thing, then uh, join that, um, and I'm sure. And then there's a theory course. If you just want to understand the background of it all, there's a really advanced theory course, um, which kind of is the foundation that, that supports all of the different courses um so yeah and there's so many more courses in here I just need to pull one out. <laughs> I can see them bubbling away which is brilliant and and for those people sort of watching that have scars themselves you also um integrate that so as, as teapot does with our cancer clients you integrate people to come into the training don't you that have got scars so that, pe that the practitioners can get real life experience and that there's a registration I believe isn't there that you can kind of sign up if you want to be added to kind of clinic updates and to be informed yeah of or you can simply are. if there's one in your area uh, it's now an, an online booking system so you can simply go on and book your appointment when there's one near you um, I do still send out updates to people on email lists but it's it's something I'm very passionate about I felt that many people who have issues with scars simply can't afford mm -hmm. um, 
to access uh, pay treatments. And a lot of people, if, if they've got a severe scar, it may stop them working. So, you know, you know, whether that's cancer or a traumatic road injury, something they may be off work for a substantial amount of time. Mm -hmm. And and uh, therefore it was really integral to uh, do that. And also, I think as a teacher, I wanted to make sure in any one group, you might have lots of people with scars, but you might not. And unless you send people away to do case studies and bring them back, I wanted people to feel confident that they've actually used the techniques on a scar before they complete the course so that they really feel, okay, well, I know I'm ready to add that, this straight into my practice. Whereas I've been on other courses where I haven't had the relevant experience by the time I got my certificate. And then if you go back to a busy clinic, you just never put that work in because you're not quite confident enough with it and you sort of lose it before you've really integrated it so for me that that's a really nice way so the only the only one I don't do that with where I do case studies instead is the c-section course because c-section mums because of the fact that they've got a little one yeah. are really unreliable and yeah. the worst thing you have is and and it's very hard to to put two people working with a c-section scar because it's very it's very limited access to mm. a c-section scar so apart from the c-section course where they come for a day go and do case studies and come back for a day yeah. and we get people into uh, we get members of the public in to have uh teacher treatment so they see and and talk to uh, yeah in it but all of the other courses and i think we've um hit over two thousand appointments have been given out now and i was i was spending yesterday <laughs> evening um, doing doing my uh, scanning and shredding of the of the clinic appointment forms, um, and it was really interesting to see how many people had had come back and maybe accessed over the year four or five appointments. So uh, you know people can get a change just from one appointment, but also some people love it so much that they come back and they often come back year on year. Um, and 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 yeah, it's very hard because it's a very distracting job. I had a ton of paperwork to to scan and shred, uh, but also you start reading fantastic treatment. My scar feels looser, and uh, and how lovely that even before the students finish, they've made a difference to an individual. Absolutely, uh, so, well, it's, look, it's a full circle kind of win win, isn't it? It's it's yeah. absolutely integral, and so yeah, amazing. So anybody interested, do jump over. We'll put all the details under this video as well. Um, but Emma, again, congratulations! Thank you so much for all of your time this morning. Uh, wonderful work that you're doing, and an absolute worthy winner of the Teapot Shine Your Light Awards Inspirational Trainer, Emma Holly. Thank you.